So let's get started. We want to start with water tonight. Phoenix getting a wake up call about the threat to our water supply. One of our main sources of water, Lake Mead, could dry up within the next eight years. There's a 20% chance of that happening. The city water services director told me on Sunday Square off this past weekend she is preparing for that worst case scenario. She proposes $1.5 billion in spending, part of it to get the water Phoenix has banked over the years and now appears might need. Uh, and, and also water rates could rise as much as 12% in, in the next two years or perhaps even more. Kate Gallego, is Catherine Sorensen being too aggressive with this plan or not moving fast enough? Catherine Sorensen is making a responsible decision. We need to plan ahead. One thing that's really set Arizona apart is our leaders have worked in a bipartisan way, mm -hmm. across party lines, across time to prepare for our water supply. Phoenix has a water supply to get us through a drought, but it's not in the right place. So Catherine Sorensen has <coughs> proposed a responsible infrastructure development plan that will help us make sure that we can get water, particularly to the northern part of our city that is so dependent on the Colorado River. I'm pleased to have worked in water rights for the Salt River Project and have been endorsed by both of the mayors with whom the city of Phoenix has water agreements, the mayor of Tucson, a Democrat, the mayor of Avondale, a Republican. So I come in with the experience to lead in a difficult time for water. All right, thank you. Nick Sarwark, I wonder how you feel about water rates perhaps going up 12% or more. The answer the city always has is we need more money out of your pocket. So when we run, run into a water crisis that everyone's seen coming, this is the West where whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. We have planned ahead. We've stored water with Tempe. We have an aquifer we can put stuff into. But the city did not look ahead far enough to create the pumping infrastructure that's necessary to get the water back out. We need to not be hitting rate payers with giant rate increases. We need to look at ways to serve the whole city without having these massive hits on our families where water rates are going up incredibly high to plan for something that hasn't even happened yet. But if there is no way to get the water out, what would you do? We have to get the water out. We have to get the water back from Tempe that we've already banked with them. How, what? Not the aquifer water, the water from Tempe. Okay, Daniel Valenzuela, what about that point that we should have saw, seen this coming? The city council should have seen this coming. The fact that banked water, there apparently wasn't a way to deliver it to the users who need it. Well, far too often, the uh, decisions that we have to make at the city council uh, many times are, are looked at as decisions that, you know, could have been made uh, in, several years ago, and, and perhaps that's true. There, hindsight's 2020. At the end of the day, local government is about problem solving, and we have a we have an issue. Catherine Sorensen is someone that uh, a couple of us know pretty well. Very very respectable person. Very well known uh, for uh, her sub, sub, subject matter expertise, and uh, and this is something that we knew uh, was coming. What do we do about this? You know, we have to. We have to uh, see the issue for what it is. When you mentioned, Bram, about a water rate increase, that's one of the things that we have to consider. It's not the only thing. As we move forward, as we expand as a city, our infrastructure must expand development. It's the kind of thing that should pay for itself in the future and how we plan. So is this plan necessary? Do you support it? Uh, well, I would have to do some more research on it before I tell you that I'm supportive of a water rate increase. That said, I can't think of a more important resource to our city. And uh, is it something that is in our future? Most likely, I, I can see that as a, as a high likelihood. But when we do it moving forward, we have to be responsible. As we move forward, there should be uh, a plan in place to keep these, uh, this, inf this type of infrastructure up to speed. All right, Moses Sanchez, do you believe this threat to our water supply is real? Bram, water was a problem seven years ago. Water is a problem five years ago. Water is not a new problem. This isn't something that just happened. This has been an ongoing issue. And uh, the fact of the matter is, the status quo at City Hall is they haven't addressed it. They haven't planned ahead. We could do a lot of different things. And two years ago, we had a tax, uh, an increase, a water rate increase of 3%. Last year, 2%. Now the solution, is 6% next year and 6% the year after that. Now, that's just unacceptable. When I talk to Phoenix families, you know what they're frustrated about? They're frustrated about hearing these water 
increases, water rate increases, without any actual solutions to it. They don't see the results from it. People want to pay for this finite resource. But you know what? They want to see what comes out of it. And the City Hall, unfortunately, lacks a lot of transparency when it comes to that. One of the things we could do, I would propose a 10 for 100 program. My 10 for 100 program means that year over year, every single dollar that you save in your water bill, we will give you a 10% credit to a future bill. Now, I understand we can't conserve our way out of this problem, but I like the idea of incentivizing people to reduce their water consumption. Okay. And we can also... I, I've got to end, <laughs> got to end you there, but thank you for that.